15 February Wednesday, MEO with Cal once again. Wow, the CPI data was extremely crazy and the market also went ballistic. The market went up, it went down, it went up again and the market swung everybody away. The thing is this, if you actually notice that the CPI data wasn't good, but the market buys on it because why? It's just slightly better than the estimated. Okay, all right. And the next thing is this, Berkshire Hathaway has sold off TSMC, all right? This is not a good news, all right? Because, is it really because the share price is good in profit? Nope. In fact, Warren Buffer only make $10 out of that. So something is wrong here as well. I'll tell you more in detail and let's go into it right now. Now, once again, disclaimer apply as usual. Please make sure you do your risk assessment and thank you, Ames, for the kind sponsorship once again. Now, let's recap what happened last night. Oh, gosh. The Dow Jones was up by was down by 156 points and the Nasdaq was up by 88 points. So, you see, it went different way. Not necessary that the Dow must be down and the Nasdaq must be also down. Sometimes it can go the other way around. And the S&P 500 obviously got the sandwich in between, up down by 1.16 points. Now, interestingly, the VIX came down to 18.91. So for those for friends of mine, if you remember that I told you to buy VIX between 18 and 19, this is a great opportunity to buy, all right? And of course, the DAX, uh, sorry, the uh, US dollar maintained at 103. So across the board, uh, Microsoft was flat, Google was flat, Amazon was flat, Apple was flat. So basically, everyone was flat, right? So wait a minute. If the big four or five plus meta are all flat, then where's the upside? Oh, it came from the Vida. It came from Tesla. In fact, Tesla up by 7%. Oh gosh, what a slap in the face. Now Tesla went up and is now back to above 200 in 209. So I'm wrong, but I'm okay because I am still very adamant, pretty sure that Tesla will come back down again. I'll give you my reason later on. So first of all, based on CNBC, the Dow closes more than 150 point lower following the January hotter than expected inflation report, okay? So a bit of mixed back over the how they report this, but never mind. So what happened is this, the US Treasury, the six month US Treasury hits 5.022%. That's the first time above 5% since 2007, all right? So remember that, that was just one year later where about your labor crisis. So again, this is a repertoire. Now, the stubbornly high inflation reading sends stocks sliding, obviously, and the consumer price index rose 0.5% for the month, okay, and the annual of 6.4. So it's slightly higher than the estimate, but overall better, okay? So it's a bit of like, oh, okay. Hence, therefore, right, the thing is this, JP Morgan also has predicted that there will be a big movement if the number was not in in the same pipeline, but we didn't see that, right? So again, JP Morgan, you're wrong again, as usual. All right, so some people say there's no surprise because the number is still within expectation, but to me, it's out that is because there is a revision of the CPI data calculation, which I'll show it to you later, and that's why the market seemingly is still okay with that. So let's see the market overall. This is gonna be crazy though, take a look here. Okay, oops, sorry. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Okay, let me just go back my screen. Okay, so here we go. A bit of uh, okay, delay. Now, so what happened over here, you can see on the screen that we have a incredible pump up first initially. Now, why? Because they stop out all the short sellers. I'll show you in the chart later. All right, they stop out everyone and then that causes a huge volume to come in to buy. And once the buying came in, the big boys came in to sell. The big boys come in to sell. The market took profit all the way down, all the way down. Then, of course, as usual, during the day, there's always this V-shape recovery which it came in, right? Mmm, pretty cool. But towards the end, the selling came in. So overall, why there's a concern? Because you can see across the board right now, the two year, the three year, the five year, the two year, the seven year, the one year, the ten year, all the yields have shot up, okay, by one to two percent. So because that means that the Federal Reserve now have a lot of room to increase interest rates, okay. So that is the big concern, right? But the market didn't care. Instead, this out, they went selective. They pump up Tesla. Now Tesla share went up on almost no reason. But there's a good volume coming in and obviously in terms of technical we are at an overbought situation but still market is buying so why well we don't know what's the reason but uh all i can know is this the china teslas all right the tesla in china their price cut is quite a fair bit okay look at it they cut between 38 uh, 38 000 yuan 
20,000 yuan for the 3P. Then, of course, the remaining is about 38,000 to 48,000. They cut about 10 to 15 percent. So, basically, this is not a good sign, right? Correct or not? Yep. But, of course, you may say, okay, they cut it means that there'll be more people buying, right? Well, that's what Tesla say. But the thing is this, based on the, the dosmas, uh, the dosmatic, um, <clears throat> the weekly sales in China, we can see, right, the numbers have actually came off. Can you see that? Domestic steel itself right, has really came off. So, yeah, I mean, the previous week, that was pretty okay. It went up quite a fair bit, but this week came off. So, again and again, if you look at the trend right now, it's actually coming down and BYD is actually catching up. So, basically, with all this, are you telling me that's a good reason to buy? Well, again, I'll leave it for you to tell me, right, in the comment box. But so, the main thing is this, according to some journalists, they say that right, Tesla only sold 39% of his Shanghai adjusted production domestically for this week, all right? So, that means it's way, 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 lower so why would that be happening so that's again you have to find out more so let's now break down the cpi data all right in taro so basically right we have a huge increment on eggs on butter margarine fuel oil and so forth but the biggest was eggs okay i'll show you why it's going up and of course with some reduction on some um uncooked beef steak bacon and some major appliances which is not really that big but my point is this all right basically the thing is that the inflation is persistent. It's actually there. It's impossible to tell me that no inflation when people go onto the market and they realize that the price is still high, right? The milk price is still high. Incredible. So let me show you now why the X prices in, in US is really going up. Let's watch this. Starting with the cost of fuel prices and then the cost of feed, the packaging prices uh, are also going up. Once a bird gets the flu, then it's really the end of your flock. When you lose that many hens, uh, egg-laying hens specifically, then yeah, the prices are going to go up. It's, it's going to be a, more of a scarcity issue. So that is why the eggs prices are still mounting up and now creating this long stretches so up by 70%. Wow, that's a lot. So don't be surprised if you go to your shopping center, I don't know, your, this food, um, the market, you do see X prices going up. Yep. Okay, that one is small little thing. Let's just go something bigger and more important. Let's go now to the next one. This is the one, the further breakdown. So energy is up by 2%, home ownership by 0.7, mm, okay. Food, 0.5, used car down by 1.9, and airline fares down by 2.1%. So that is the reason why it's still pretty good, right? Okay, so basically we can see that this instant reaction will be on the yield, as you can see. The CPI data is out year over year, 5.6 versus 5.5. So it's just a 0.1%, but the market make it as it's so good, right? Okay. Now, the thing is this, because of all that, right, the bullishness continue in the stock market and I found for the reason, well, primarily the retailer and the institutional composite, these people are buying, all right, look at it, they are buying, they are buying quite a fair bit, okay? So, they are net bullish right now and the market is okay, have recovered a little bit. So, of course, we can see that the Federal Reserve have been hiking all the way and then recently they say no pivot, no pivot. They still hike, lots of number, but still hiking. So, the thing is this, because of that, the net bullishness sentiment is actually creeping up and that's one reason why the stock market is going up on its own. The NAIM, the National Association of Active Investment Managers, are also buying. Wow, they are also buying. So that's why the S&P 500 is also going up. All right. so at this junction here, if you tell me that, Cal, see, this is bullishness. 
This is why the stock market is going up. Okay, fair enough. You are, top, you are totally right. But the question is this. Then if these people are buying, the retailers are buying, why Morgan Stanley, Mike Wilson, and this uh, Bank of America, Michael Harnett, all these guys are not buying. And in fact, they are selling. So that's a question mark here. If these guys are buying, who are selling? So that is my question that I want to ask. But of course, again, I'll show you with some statistics right now. This is the money flow indicator from one of the YouTuber I follow and apparently quite interesting. Here, this uh, so-called proprietary uh, money flow indicator. So I don't know what's the back end of this. But well, since seemingly whenever you cross, the S&P 500 or stock prices will fall, right? So it's something like the MACD. And of course, if you do a stochastic itself, we are having a similar pattern. The money flow indicator is apparently um, still okay, but um, positive. So this one's a bit mixed here. The MACD indicator, we are pretty near to a close up here zone, whereby usually that will lead to some selling, right? So question is then, what are this then? Okay, so of course, this is again, not my indicator. I cannot tell you. How about my own indicator? I can tell you now. Okay, for my own indicator, you can see that the market is surging. Yes, from the low end here, it was a BNB at 33,000 was the Dow Jones and it went all the way up to 34,400. So that's why we will say that I'm wrong. But if you look carefully, guys, this is the point A and this is point B. You can see that yesterday, the market purpose break point B and point A, that means that a lot of stops got triggered. And once the stop got triggered, you notice that what happened? Instantaneously, the market pulls back all the way. So that means it was artificially pumped up to get the stops out and then the selling come in. As of today, right now, today is trading below the pivot to you. Today is trading below MLP. This is not a good sign. So based on my own indicator, it's pretty clear that we have the weightage showing that the last 10 over days, the selling pressure is actually the market. And that's why you can see this curve in motion here. But of course, the last two days, undeniable, there are some funds coming in to buy. So we mix back right now. But at least I can tell you right, at least I can see from here, we should have some resistance. And the main support will be at this MA30 today at 33,913. I'll tell you more in the technical side, all right? For the S&P 500, it's even clearer. We can see a very strong resistance around this area right now at about 40 150 area very strong resistance and today is a dj dd and be careful of that because the market most likely will revisit 4076 and of course on my own indicator the weightage is actually red the last few days so when the market pumps up but the weightage is red be very careful and if the market continue to stay around here and if my ksi indicator turns red then selling is kind of expected guys. So that's the reason why I feel that my indicator is calling for sell and the boys are calling for buy, not all of them. So this is gonna be a very interesting period. But let's just break really down into the CPI, my own way of understanding this. Now, first of all, the shelter rent inflation is still very, very high. It is way above what the highest point since 1991. So if that is the case itself, right, this is not a good sign at all. It means that people are still paying a lot of money just for shelter alone. And this is not a good sign because shelter is a very important necessity in life. And of course, if it's so high, people can't have more money to do something else, right? Agree? And of course, now the top five individual contributors to the US headline CPI, we can see that rent of shelter takes the highest, then after the used car, then vehicle, electricity, and therefore. So to me itself, right, this is not a good sign for inflation. And of course, as you can see right now, the headline and cost CPI printed numbers shows that yes, we have still, we have pulled down from the high, but it's still a very far fetch from where we started before the uh, pandemic. So we should have something around here. So we are like almost double. So again and again, this means that there's a lot of room to go before we can see further problem. All right. So the thing is, you can see over here right now, this is the great trajectory expectation surging back hawkishly with the terminal rate right now is 5.25 percent the number that I've been saying since last year which everybody was telling me impossible i say it will hit and it's coming in right now and the worst thing is this if the numbers are still at the high area this number can go to six percent guys this can really really go and Drake cut impossible right now so if you look at it here, the one month percentage change in the CPI for all urban consumers has seasonally adjusted, yeah? is actually up by to 0.5. Last month was 0.1. So again, this actually tells you that if it wasn't the uh, uh, adjusted numbers on the CPI, we should easily be at least a 7.7 7 to 8 itself. So you can see over here, 
the food prices is higher and then shelter price is still there and transportation have increased quite a fair bit. So again, all this information, you don't see it actually on the mainstream media because why? Obviously, right? So now you can see the boys are not stupid. They know what's going on. So immediately right now, the um, the um we can see very clear that there's increment on the potential rate hike in March, May and June. All of them has uptick momentum. So now the odds for 25 basis point in May and June have jumped to 82 to 59 percent respectively. And I can tell you that it will go there, and we will see the six percent mark. Right, write it down somewhere. It will go there, and if it goes there, then definitely the market will break. Okay, because now take a look at what happened. Look at the dot plot. Right, most of them were looking at between 5.25 to 5.5, but that is without the expectation of the CPI data at this level. So I'm pretty sure the next meeting, I talk about it again, this will adjust. And if they adjust to 5.5 to 5.75, the market will definitely break. All right. So if you look back into historical numbers, you can see right now, the service CPI saw, the service CPI here, saw to its highest level since 1982, but the good inflation continues slow. So of course, the good prices are coming down because you're putting in lesser people demanding it itself. That's why they can see it's pulling back. But because services is something that people need, right? So that's why it's going up. And it's still be the same cost to the consumer. Don't you, think, don't you think so? And the thing is this, right? We are coming back to somewhere around this area and that was back in 1974 to 1976 whereby inflation goes skyrocket. All right, so guys, take note of all this information. This is no joke, yeah? And the thing is this, this is something that you must understand right now, guys. This is really incredible. I didn't know about this. The rise in American cost of living outpaced their income gains for the 22nd month in a row. Oh gosh, that means that for the last 22 months, the Americans are spending more money than their income gains itself. And this is not good, guys. The last time we see something like this was back here, and that one took about probably about 10 to 12 months. This time around, it's very 22nd month and it's still going on. Isn't that a problem here? So all these things speak for itself, and that's why the inversion has reached to 1981 low, guys. From 1986, it's pushed to 1984, now it's 1981. And I can get see from yourself, guys, whenever the inflate the inversion goes crazy we definitely will see recession. There's no way to run around it. I don't know why people are still calling for no recession, but it's impossible. It will happen. And I believe that it could happen in August. Okay, and it's the official one. So I think that there will be a recession coming in. It will be in August, in my opinion. But of course, the market will not wait until that to react. Likelihood, the market will react likely in February to March period, which is now, because usually the recession itself, right, the official numbers when it come out, right, the stock market would have moved down, bottom up about three months to six months before the official recession. So that is my view over here right now, okay? So of course, I'm entitled to my view. I'm just sharing with you. Now, of course, when you can see right now, the two-year yield is way higher than the S&P dividend yield. That means that, right, this is not a good sign. The S&P now is more expensive relative to the to the two-year bonds. The last time was in March 2001. So again, when people start to realize that, hey, they are not earning much from the earnings, they are not earning much from the stock prices, and they notice that the yields are going down, it's going, sorry, going up itself, why not, right? Go to the bond market. So this is going to be crazy because when a lot of people start to go to the bond market, that is always a shift of the money. It will go to the, it will leave from the equity market and things will get very, very ugly, all right? So all this information tells you that if you look at the CPI from the real point of view, you should know that the numbers last night itself, it doesn't make any sense. And that's why you don't see a 500 points uh, upside in the US Dow Jones because they know that something is wrong, guys. So of course, uh, there's this Wall Street guy in, uh, by the name of um, this Michael. He is actually saying that there should be a recession coming in because the Federal Reserve is rising interest rate, high inflation, bank tightening, lending standard, and we have all of them today. So let's just watch here itself. He says that the S&P 500 can go down to 32.25. Wow, okay. Somewhere similar like this uh, Mike Wilson. Let's bring him in right now for you to hear him yourself. Seated every single recession. So for uh, we've got kind of the three ingredients uh, when you look historically that have been there before a How recession begins. That's not news to anyone, what you just described. That's true. Um, we all know that spring is coming. We all know that summer is coming and that that will come regardless of whether or not we know. You, you, don't, not. Think, you don't think that we've had uh, <laughs> last year and that the 
what do you ca calculate the drop for the NASDAQ to be last year? You don't think that that was because of what you just described? No, I, I actually think that, that while that is, uh, I think, the general view that markets last year went down because we were pricing in a recession that was going to come at some point. Or, or Fed, uh, r rising rates. Well, yeah, and I think that that's exactly what it was. It was a bond bear market where equities were the victim, something we haven't seen to this magnitude or duration really since the 70s. So the first impact of a Fed tightening cycle always comes through the market through PE compression. That was the story of last year. The next effect with a lag, the long and variable lag we always hear about, right. hits the economy about 15 to 18 months later. And I think the large majority of that is still ahead. Earnings. Earnings, employment. I totally agree with him. PE compression was what the main tone last week, last year. And now it's earnings and the earnings are bad. We all can see that right in front of us. So why are we lying to ourselves then? So because of all this, I'm going to stay bearish right now. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm staying bearish right now. I still think the market will come back down quite a bit. bit. I still believe that we see a 10 to 15% drop in the coming months. All right. So I'm not going to change here. So brush off half away. Apparently in the latest portfolio, they have reduced up to 86 to 90% of TMMC, TSMC totally get out. Now, the thing is this, based on the num the amount they go, I mean, based on the, what do you call, the level they go in and the level they exit, they only make $10. Now, $10 is nothing for Warren Buffett. So why is he doing that? Is it because he knows something that's going to be bad or is it geopolitical? I don't know, right? So basically, just take note, they have really exited all, if not all, their position in TSMC. And of course, this is not going to be good because if you look at the share price right now, the share price was just climb up recently from $72 base all the way up to now 97 But again, if you look at it from the technical point of view, that means that very good chance it'll come back down again. So at the moment now, the uh, post market now that's trading here, let me take a look, it's trading now at $93 down by about 5% all right, after hours. And I believe that that will pressure further. And of course, when Warren Buffett sells, usually the rest will follow through because they probably know that Warren Buffett must have something in, in mind. And of course, that can really be bad. All right, so traders, be very careful on this. Avoid this TFs MC for time being, all right? Okay. All right, so we will now go to the technical side, watch the next video, and I'll see you there. Bye-bye. Mm,